Hey y'all, Tom, ND3N here, and in this Ham Shack chat, I'm going to show you a few features on a new toy of mine, the Innovato Quadra Ham Clock. Specifically, we're going to take a look at the Live Spots, VOA Cap, and DX cluster functions of this fantastic variation of what is becoming a standard in many shacks. Please let me know if there's anything about this whole system that you would like me to expand upon in future videos. Also, as always, any corrections, concerns, questions, or just general remarks can be left in the comment section below. Questions? Comments? The first thing that we're going to look at is the live spots right up here. And before we can make any changes that, we've got to unlock our screen. I'm going to do that. I'm going to deselect lock screen and go OK. And we are now unlocked. I can make edits across the board. And for the remainder of this video, I'm going to leave everything unlocked. Live Spots is really interesting. And I'm going to click up here. And right now, my default is in PSK, looking for people who've heard people from my location. I'm looking at the grid, the count. I've got it set for 30 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and change that to one hour. Down here, I've selected the bands that my antenna is resonant on. So 80, 40, 30, 20, 15, and 10. And I'm going to click OK. Now you'll see that the 160, 60, 17, 12, 6, and 2 are blanked out. But this is the current activity and it's also shown down here in my map. Now we're going to come back up here. Right now we're looking at the grid, which is my EM89. I'm going to change this to my call, and you'll see the numbers have slimmed down, but these numbers reflect PSK reporter, people who have heard me in the last hour. And you can see that it now says of ND3N. I'm going to come back up here. I'm going to change this back to my grid and go for max distance instead of count. Click OK. You see these are the max distances recorded for each of these bands and they are color coded so the 40 meter band is this orange here. 20 meters is the yellow so Australia down here or Tasmania I guess. 15 meters, I was able to reach out a little over 6,000 miles, and 10 meters, I reached out 4,000 miles. Now we're going to change my time to the last 24 hours and put it back on the count and click OK. This is my activity over the last 24 hours. So you can change these to the way you want. I'm going to change my time to 30 minutes, PSK of my grid, and show me the count. This is my default setting, although when I'm actually operating I will usually set my time down to 15 minutes. My voyage with this style of ham clock started with the Viridium HF clock, which I still got on the shack, and that cost me in the range of $600. Although I really enjoy this particular device, my two main complaints about it were the small size that made it hard to make any adjustments and the limited data speed and onboard memory that limited much of the functionality. If you're enjoying this so far and you appreciate my suave and debonair style, please take a moment to pop that thumbs up icon and give me a like. You like me. You really like me. VOA CAP is the Voice of America coverage analysis program. It consists of an algorithm that predicts what your propagation will be like. In the pane, you'll notice I'm on my local time, and you can change that to UTC time if you want. So my UTC time is 15.05, so that's right in here. My local time is showing right here, so that is a little after 11 o'clock a.m. Now we can change how this up here looks. So I'm currently set on 100 watts. I'm going to click that and I'm going to change that to 50 watts. My graph has changed. And let's put it up on 1000 watts and you can see my graph has changed again. I usually operate at 50 watts. 
Now another thing you can do is click on the mode. Right now I'm in CW and I'm going to change this to FT8. So using FT8 at 50 watts, this is my prediction. Takeoff angle really doesn't matter, but I put it in the middle. But if I go one degree, let's see how that changes the map. It, it changes pretty good. Low takeoff angle gives me better coverage. And if I take it the other extreme, greater than nine degrees, it cuts it down considerably. So I'm going to put it back in the middle here. SP, this is short path. If I want to see what it looks like on the long path, I can choose that. And you can see the long path is considerably different. This final one is my sunspot numbers. And let me pop my live spots over to sunspot number. And you should see it come up at 106. So that's a fixed value based on the actual sunspot numbers. Go back to live spots. A really cool thing that you can do is you can pick between two spots. Right now, I've got my DX sitting up here and I'm going to move it. I'm going to select this one right here, coming down to a Caribbean island. I'm gonna say set DX and say okay. So that's now my DX. And you can see if I wanted to work that island, my map says anything between 20 and 10 should be really good. Now, another thing you can do I can click on the 20 meter band here and say, show me my relative propagation map. You can see down on the bottom, it's changed to a reliability report. And I'm between yellow and green on this. So between yellow and green tells me I've got a 60 to 80% chance of working that station, which is pretty good chance. Now, if I want to get more critical and really look at it closely, I can click on my DX, there we go, and I can say zoom three and recenter. And that brings up this map. So you can see I'm more in the green than I am in the yellow. So I'm probably higher to the 80% than I am the 60%. Now we're gonna put everything back to normal. I'm gonna select terrain and turn off my 20 meter relative. Click okay. And, and then I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna set on a zoom 1x, click on reset, and you can see I am back to my normal terrain map. The differences between the big ham clock and the little ham clock, I didn't really realize the limitations that were on the nine inch screen versus the quadra ham clock. The size is only limited by the size of the monitor that you choose to display it on. And the Quadra Mini computer does have a full HD HDMI connection. Now, in my case, I purchased this 24 inch Samsung monitor from Amazon for a right around 60 bucks. The price on the Viridium HF clock, the nine inch version, was in the $600 range. My total investment, including the monitor and the keyboard and mouse and all of that, was under $150 total, or about a quarter of the price of the little one. Now, if you feel like you've learned something from this video, and if you know other people who think would appreciate this particular device, please share. Sharing is fun. With your friends and compatriots in the ham radio community, and especially on any social media sites you might frequent. So now we're gonna talk about the DX cluster. To set up your DX clusters, we want to restart ham clock, and yes, I'm sure, and we're going to go into page two of the master menu. I'm using dxspots.com on port 23. You're not limited to that. I've got my cluster commands set, so I'm saying set the filter to the originating country, pass K, that's the United States. Obviously, if you're watching from someplace outside of the United States, you would set that to your abbreviation. Then I'm telling it to set the filter for states to pass Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, West Virginia, and Pennsylvania. I've got the rest of these turned off. On page two, I've got those set up, so in case I'm using an AR cluster, and we'll talk more about that in just a moment. And on page three, if I was using a CC cluster, this is what I would use. 
Now I'm going to pop up to page 5. You want to set your scroll direction to either top down or bottom up. I like top down, which means your most recent spots on your DX cluster will be on the top of the list. So now I'm going to click done. We're going to go back into our ham clock. And while we're doing that, I'm going to bring up a web resource. This is the DX cluster information. And if you click on telnet directory, here's all of the available DX clusters worldwide. And if you scroll down here and I'm going to, you get to the United States, which is your K. These are all of the United States clusters. The AR cluster that I use is usually K1TTT here. And I am using DX spots. So I'm going to do a quick search and I'm going to look up DX spots. And there it is. And you see that's a CC cluster. And you also have the DX Spider. So if you're using one of these, make sure that you understand what type of cluster it is. If you're using a CC cluster, these are the commands that you want to use and it comes down here. It's a little hard to distinguish, but they're all there. If you're using a DX Spider, this is the website you want to use and you'll have to dig down and you'll find the command that you want to enter. Finally, the AR clusters are here. So here's your show announce announce filter and if I come down here set announce filter this is where I did my spotter state and my spotter country now we'll get out of that now we're going to move our DX spots from here because up here you can see seven of the most recent ones so I'm going to click here I'm going to just put contest up here for now you can't have multiple versions in different panes. So for instance, if I click here on vocab, you'll see that live spots is not available. And you'll see that contests is not available because I'm using those two. I'm going to go back and I'm going to click on DE. I'm going to come down here to data panes. I'm going to click on DX cluster because it's now available here. It's going to read the DX spots. And I'm going to turn my live spots off here and we'll just put a up here. That takes away the extra noise that was caused by live spots. And that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have enjoyed putting it all together for you. I've included links for everything that was discussed in this video down in the video description. For items that I purchased on Amazon, the link is to my Amazon Associates account. If you use these links, Amazon will give me a small referral fee that doesn't affect your cost, not one iota. I've also put chapters down in the video description that will allow you to jump to a particular topic to view or review. Please remember to like, share, and comment. Also, I would greatly appreciate it if you would consider subscribing to this channel. 73 until the next, hey y'all. As always, I am at your service. This has been a Hamshack chat about the Innovato Quadra Ham Clock. I'm Tom, ND3N, just like it says on the hat, and I am out.